uh, a bear attacked packed, uh, attacked him, or his wife got hurt anyway. I, that I knew. And he went to get help. By the time he got the help and got back there, the bears half ate his wife. And he Ooh. said, going out in those places out without some type of bear protection, you know, like bear spray, you're, you're, you know, risking your life. And I never thought about that. But I think if you're out looking for a Bigfoot, you're never going to find it. You know, it's like a story right. I, I had with a guy went out there and he said, oh, I would hear these tree knocks. And I said to him, I said, OK, what did you do? And he goes, I knocked on the tree and then it would knock back. And I said, did you ever think it was somebody else there looking out for Bigfoot? And they were knocking on a tree. You thought, oh, gee, that's a Bigfoot. So you knocked on the tree and you, it was two people out there looking for a Bigfoot. And you're talking to yourselves. Well, you make a good point. <laughs> now, okay, we need to go on break. I'm not going to put you on hold this time, so don't yell, scream, or anything, because it'll go over the air. I will turn you down. Uh, but uh, we'll be back in about two minutes, and we're going to talk about aliens, UFOs, and missing people and all that stuff. And we're going to love to talk to you about reincarnation. We can even talk about that. We got an hour, so we'll be back okay. just uh, two and a half minutes. So everybody, take care. All right, sir. Não perde tempo escolhendo uma roupa, porque no fim eu sei que vou tirar. Fala tchau pro seu batom na boca e fala oi pra quem te faz pirar. Se você já tá com a mesma sensação, pode vir. Eu tô um bumbum Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa ficou mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço No cansaço, no cansaço Vamos fazer um regaço Um regaço, um regaço Colarinha dos amassos Amassos Fazer um regaço, um regaço, um regaço. Rafa Gomes. E no beat. Não perde tempo escolhendo a roupa. Porque no fim eu sei que vou tirar. Fala tchau pro seu batom na boca E fala oi pra quem te faz pirar Se você já tá com a mesma sensação Pode vir, gente, que eu tô um cão Tá descontrolada toda essa tara E não para porque a coisa fica mara Vou te ganhar no cansaço You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, from our compound to you worldwide, with your host, Gary Anderson. Well, that is me. We're talking about uh, with Tom tonight. Now we're going to go into talking about missing people that gone into the forest, gone, well, driving and totally disappeared. Is that UFO related or what is it? Hey, Tom, are you still there? Yes, sir. So, you know, there's a report of all these people disappearing in national forests, like on a regular basis with no trace of them, or people getting in their car and then disappearing, no trace. And the FBI, you know, can't even figure out what's happening to them. What do you think is going on? Who's in it? Is that David Kalaitis that does uh, 411? The, sure and, is. And does the thing on all the people that have gone missing in the national parks and, and in cities also? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah i I think that you know there's probably that's just my opinion. There's more than one thing that's responsible for that. But when you when you think about the fact that you have 
uh, the type of creature that you've talked about that's there. Um, you know, you have, oh, things that you can see, things that you can't see. Um, you have, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. Down where Charlie Gould grew up, you have that mountain range. And across from that mountain range, you have a, another mountain range called the Superstition Mountains. Now, the Apache who live in the area to this day say that there are portals that are in various places that uh, literally go into other dimensions and that they, they believe that there are things that go in and out of those portals. And uh, there's every, you know, there's every indication that that could be one of the things that's responsible for these people disappearing. Not only that, but, um, well, I'm trying to remember one of my, one of my associates told me about an incident that he had where he was out. This was in uh, either Utah or New Mexico, and he saw this this craft. It was like a light craft, and it came down, and it literally buzzed him. And uh, he he felt intuitively that this thing was extremely malevolent. Um, he could not cl- he could not clearly see what was inside of it, but he said there was like this reddish hue that he could say the outline of something it looked like a it looked like a humanoid but it really wasn't that clear and it had these glowing eyes <laughs> and he said it scared the hell out of him uh-huh. so you know i think that that when you're talking about people that are going missing i think that there are any number of things that can be responsible for that well, I do think portals do exist, and if you're out, you know, wherever they're at, and you happen to go into one, who knows what dimension or where you end up. I, I do know that people are missing, and it's to the point where, uh, you know, the, the, even the, the, the Forest Service police kind of cover it up, and it's kind of scary, but then you start looking at the people who go in their car, right, and go for a camping trip or go on a road trip across country and totally disappear, now, as you've been in law enforcement, you know there's a certain amount of serial killers out there, but I don't see it being that many of them for the, this amount of people who keep going and vanishing every year. Ted Bundy doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that would hang out in the woods if you give my drift. I mean, yeah, there there are probably a few cases like that, but uh, my opinion as a you know retired cop is that you know, that would be in the minority of cases. Well, I could see it 10 years ago, five years ago, you know, before, at least in this state where marijuana, for example, now is legal. But it, it, you take it before it was legal and you're out somewhere and you maybe find a grower, you know, that is, has a huge, you know, amount of, you know, what. And he doesn't want to go to prison for, you know, quite a few years. I, he, there's a chance if you stumble across it and he sees you, something could happen to you, but not not the amount of people that have vanished over uh, a 20 year period or a 30 year period. It's scary. And, you know, again, is it UFO connected? Is it going through portals or is it Bigfoot? It's doing it. I don't know. You know, Gary, I think that it's, it's like the UFO phenomenon itself. I think that if you look at, you know, the UFO phenomena is, is a combination of things. It's not just one thing. Um, I know that there are those adherents that say, well, they're they're basically from other worlds, you know, in the solar system, or they're from other worlds in the galaxy, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't buy that. I think that you have some of that going on, and I think that you have, uh, you know, dimensional creatures. You have uh, people or uh, things that are coming down here from various places. You have... Um, Interdimensional, you have extraterrestrial, you have, you know, a plethora of different things happen. And I think that some of them are uh, benevolent. I think some of them are neutral, and I think some of them are malevolent. And I think the same thing is going on as far as missing missing entities are concerned. I think that uh, when you look at all the different cases of people that go missing, I don't think that it's one thing. I think it's probably a combination of things. Oh, I... Which, uh, which I think would be, you know, great material for us to write a song about, Charlie. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it could be, even for me as a listener. But I, I, I look at, you know, Mary Joyce, who runs a UFO Bigfoot reporting center out of uh, Cashiers, North Carolina. And, yeah. And, you know, it, it, 
one time we were talking before we went on air, and I actually even got her to talk about it on air. She had somebody that was with the U.S. government, had all the clearances, and she checked them out. She was an editor and a reporter for numerous magazines and newspapers. Remember when they used to be around? And uh, she very credible person. And this one guy claimed, you know, in one of the underground bases in North Carolina, by the way, that there is aliens there uh, sharing technology with our military. But these particular aliens love humans, if you know what I mean. To serve man. Yeah, like that old Twilight uh, <laughs> series that they, you know, that, that they liked man. And that the government, you know, it was basically sacrificing human beings for technology. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, because, as you know, you can hold every government clearance you could have and have the highest, you know, top secret clearance and still be ready for the loony bin. You know, Gary, the the interesting thing about having uh, worked for Boeing, and I'm not going to violate any non-disclosure agreements that I signed, but there were people that when they found out the clearances you had, they would discuss certain things with you. And they discussed all all manner of things. Um, you know, we're talking about everything from anti-grav machines to particle beam weapons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think if you go back and you look at the technology that Tesla uh, had access to, and Tesla allegedly had a particle beam weapon that the FBI, when they invaded his home, and uh, I believe he died in 1943, took all of his notes, took all of his papers. Um, Tesla was really a visionary. And and when you think about what he wanted to do for humanity, he was really one of the good guys. Tesla had a coil that was capable of drawing energy out of the atmosphere. And he was... um, financially supported by J.P. Morgan. And what uh, our friend J.P. Morgan did was uh, one of one day when he was having a chat with Tesla, Tesla said, you know, I really would like to put a Tesla coil in every house in the United <laughs> States and basically uh, put a dampering agent on it so that they could use it to power their houses for free. And, of course, J.P. Morgan reared back like a wounded lion and said, not on my watch we're not and immediately cut off his funding because if you if you weren't going to you know pay for it <laughs> then the powers that be didn't want anything to do with it oh yeah wasn't it a combination that was out of the ground and out of the atmosphere they could pull out electricity and, and if that would have happened and it's funny you know if it actually is true what did the fbi what was their why would they hide it away for all these years or destroy it well, they know that it could cause economic uh, hardship to our country. Uh, let's face it, how many people get rich off of electricity? Well, think about one of the things, you know, I don't I don't agree with everything that Stephen Greer says. I, I like a lot of what he has to say, but um, one of the things that I, I do like, and that is that there is this thing called zero-point energy. It's available. Um, you know, the government knows about it. Tesla knew about it. Uh, that's one of the things that he wanted to provide for everyone globally. Can you imagine, you know, what that would have done to, to the third world if, if they all had access to uh, things that uh, could give them free energy? Uh, you know, things could help them take uh, water sources and, and purify them. How many people realize that, that devices like that could to take the third world, which on a whole is really suffering from having a, a, an abundance of fresh water. That's one of the biggest problems on this planet. And to use that energy to convert, you know, the, the various forms of water that we have to make it clean, potable, uh, so that, you know, that people of this world could, could be healthy and have what they need uh, for a, a, a plethora of different items. Um, I think that there is an aspect of, of, negative intelligence, I'll put it that way, that's responsible for keeping those things. It's the power elite. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. It's it's unfortunate that that's going on. Well, isn't it, too, that power elite, okay, the, or the New World Order, or whatever you want to call them, and I can call them a few other names, too. Not bad, but, I mean, names, that they don't want the population 
to in- increase. And if you gave everybody a capability of having, you know, power to heat their houses, uh, electricity, you know, 